Warm on, I'm wet and bald and half naked, and I want to talk about shooting movies. Fuck you! So yeah, I, just, I don't fucking. Oh, I'm all frame rate is. So yeah, I saw Shin movies. I saw Shin Godzilla like eons ago. There was an exclusive Michigan showing in a theater near not me, and we went to it to see it, and then we saw it at G Fest the same year, and it was like, haha, we already saw it, you nerds. And then they were going to have Shin Ultraman at G-Fest this year and just didn't for fucking reasons. Because the universe hates me. It's okay, universe. I do, I do too. But then I seen that uh, Amazon Prime had it. They got Shin Ultraman. No, actually, I saw they had Shin Kamen Rider for free. And that's kind of a good thing. I thought they had Shin Ultraman that you could buy, and that was... You know, that was pretty good. I, I liked it. That would have been fun to see at G-Fest because there was monsters. So every time a monster shows up, everybody would clap. And every time you see spacium beams and things, people would clap. And you see a motherfucker get cut in half, and people would clap. So, I mean, that would have been cool. That would have been really cool in theaters. They got a cool theater they show things in. It's all classical looking and stuff. And I lost my wallet in there once because I'm fat. <laughs> my My thick cake ass actually squeezed my wallet out of some workout pants I was wearing because I can only wear work workout pants because I'm like 60 pounds overweight. Well, it's on 30 now. This is like that time I told a story about shitting myself. Where the fuck even was I? Oh, yeah. Uh, there's a cat. A bunch of boxes. And she and Ultraman, and it was pretty good. Ultraman looked weird as fuck and very alien. <laughs> Cause I mean, it's not a guy in a suit, it's CGI. All of it was CGI. I don't know if it was like Shin where some of it was motion capture to try and be kind of like suitmation. Cause Shin didn't have any suitmation at all. Fun fact, it just looked like it at certain points. They had a dude mo capping with thick drumstick thunder thigh thingies on and walking with like wood plank things tied to his legs so delay his steps. And that's how they did the mo cap for Shin Godzilla. So maybe they did something like that for Ultraman. The thunder thighs and everything. But I had started watching Ultraman, like the original one, so I'd seen some of these monsters, like Naranga. <laughs> when there's a dude that's, like, attacking electric plants. So I was like, yay, he's good. He's good to fight that man. Turns invisible and eats electricity and doesn't afraid of anything. And Ultraman fucked him up. There's even a cool twist on how the dude becomes Ultraman. In the original show, the aliens are like, I think they show up and, I don't know, he just meets them and they kind of merge Ultraman with dude. I'm sure it's more complicated than that, but I don't fucking remember. But in the movie, you just see the guy run off to save a kid and Ultraman shows up and he's all silver and fights a monster. And, like, the impact of him landing sends out a huge blast wave and later on the guy comes back and then he keeps disappearing whenever Ultraman shows up and it turns out Ultraman fucking killed him <laughs> and like merged with him and sort of became him but he was dead I guess but it was and he kept going to visit his body which was just sitting there all grayed out and like dead that's what bodies do they gray out and just lay there perfectly intact they definitely don't shit and piss themselves I've seen enough to know that that is a lie. I think the director of Shin Godzilla... Well, I guess I had two directors. Did they both work on Shin? Other movies? I know Anno had a part in Sh Kamen Rider and Ultraman, and Ultraman really felt like Shin Godzilla. Still very different because, I mean, it had to be. It's hard to ground Ultraman like you can with Godzilla. Godzilla started out kind of more grounded and went crazy. Ultraman, just, there's like no way. I was wondering how they are going to make it more real, and they kind of didn't. <laughs> you can only do so much to have it still be Ultraman. There's no, not much realism you could throw in there. They tried. But it felt a lot like, well, Ultraman, just with like some shit and flavoring.
It was good. It was good overall. The only thing I wish was that, like, he fought more of the monsters because a lot of the fighting is between him and humanoid jerks. A dude that comes and tries to manipulate everybody into killing each other so he could take over the world. I can't remember his name. Zerata or something? I don't care about being thorough. Where's my cat? And Mephilus, who came to Earth and wanted to, like, become the Supreme Chancellor, the Supreme Authority or some shit. He never really specifies what that would entirely mean, but he... The humans can be bonded to Ultraman, and that makes... Well, Ultraman species. And that makes them, like, easily weaponized. They can use Spacium technology and grow and shit and become invincible and stuff. At one point, the leading lady becomes gigantic and invincible, just to prove this. So... That makes humans very desirable, I guess. And, uh, Mephilus just kind of wants to harvest that. It's not entirely clear if he's evil. But he sees another Ultraman, I think Zeton? Or, no, that was the name of a big weapon that was gonna blow up the Earth. But he sees the blue and gold Ultraman and is like, I don't think we need to fight over this planet anymore, because, uh, I'm out. And he leaves. And then Ultraman finds out, like, the Ultra people want to blow up Earth. There I go summarizing shit completely again. I'm not editing a 20-minute video, goddammit. But yeah, the Ultraman just fights humanoid people, mostly. He does fight Naranga. And this sweet nuclear dude that's got two tails. That was a cool fight. He just fucking donkey punches him in the face to end the fight and then flies off with his body because he's a nuclear reactor. So he can't use spacium on him and blow him up. But yeah, that's kind of my only real complaint is just... Well, that and the ending kind of just happens. They come up with a plan to stop Zeton or whatever from blowing up the Earth. It's just using the Spacium, like, Transformer thing Ultraman has twice, and then he flies into it, and it's done. It's that the humans had to come up with the plan, which was cool, but, like, I don't know, it was very quick. But then Shin Kamen Rider, that was a whole different story. It kind of felt like a Shin movie at first, but then over time it becomes more just, like, Kamen Rider. <laughs> Did I mention the guy from Kamen Rider Black Sun that played Kamen Rider Black Sun? The reboot one? Not the original. <laughs> he was the leader of the special team that Ultraman was part of in Ultraman Shin movie. Because I kept seeing him, I was like, you know... He doesn't look quite as gruff as he did in Kamen Rider, but he looks very fucking familiar. And then I looked it up, and that's him, and he's actually, like, a big-named actor. So big-named that I can't remember. That means nothing, because I'm a fucking idiot. So Shin Kamen Rider happened, and yeah, it, it kind of loses the Shin feel pretty quickly, and kind of just becomes more like Kamen Rider Black Sun miniseries, and then Kamen Rider Amazons. Which means it gets like kind of really corny and schlocky and it's still still good to watch, but it kind of dragged. It kind of dragged at times. It, I think it would have been better as a miniseries, honestly. I mean, it gets both. It, it's a remake of the original Common Rider, which is just like Shin Ultraman is like a reboot of original Ultraman. So the, both of the original Ultraman, Common Rider men, <laughs> are in it. They they both show up. Because in the original, the dude got, like, injured, I think, and had to be recasted. Well, not replaced with a new man that used, like, the same suit, but was not the same man. And actually, I don't know if this is a nod to that, but when the new Kamen Rider shows up and fights, he's still brainwashed by Shocker. When he shows up and fights the original Kamen Rider, he breaks his fucking leg. Like, he snaps that bitch, and it's... It's dangling, and it's turning backwards and stuff, and it's like, I just thought of this. Is that, is that like a reference to the original guy getting injured and having to be replaced? But it gets, like, really sh schlocky and kind of drags, and I didn't like it nearly as much as Shin Ultraman. I almost wasn't even gonna, like, talk about it. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't super impressed overall with either, but Shin Ultraman was a fun watch. And Shin Kamen Rider was kind of a fun watch. The ending to that is fucking confusing because I thought an AI thing was the problem that was trying to like take over the world and make everyone happy by like controlling them. And then you find out there's a butterfly man who wants to send everybody to some like cyber dimension where nobody can lie. And that's supposed to be like a good thing, but it it's also a bad thing, because his sister, who's helping Common Rider Man, both Common Rider Men, he, uh, she says it's hell, since everybody speaks their true feels, I guess. God, my nose is big.
But, uh, yeah, then at the end, she gets fucking murdered, <laughs> but puts, like, a program in Kamen Rider's helmet so that he could, like, stop Butterfly Man. They keep using a word, paraflies or something. It's supposed to disrupt things because he's developing a program to do things? I don't even know. But eventually, he put, gets his helmet on Kamen Rider Butterfly Evilman. And also, they had to fight through a bunch of other well, augmented people just like common riders one of them was spider based and they called him like spider aug and the the main one was butterfly aug and was very very powerful he fucks them up a lot breaks replacement common rider man's arms and that's kind of gross and he's just he's just dick punching he's just beating him up because they use energy called like prana i think and he's able to harness it way better than them and it's cool because he, as he's using it, he's kind of weakening and the fight becomes less choreographed. He's not able to dance around and beat their asses as much. He's having to grapple with them more. And, well, I mentioned having to get a helmet on him with a program to stop him. And there's a cool moment. They they have to get his helmet off. And the second Kamen Rider, his arms are all broken. So while Main One is grappling with the weakened Butterfly Augman, he, he's like, I got it! And he comes in and fucking headbutts him and both their helmets snap off. So then Kamen Rider Man is like, hey, wear this helmet now that you're beaten and not so mean anymore. It's got your sister in it because her will and I guess her prana was in it. So she was kind of alive. Prana is also like their soul. It's like energy they all expel and they all have specific prana they mentioned at one point that's coded like them. Say, hey, where's the helmet? And she's like, hey, stay in here with me forever and stop doing whatever the fuck your program's doing. Which they'd already stopped that program because both the common Riders crashed their bikes into, like, his chair thing he was using. So I don't even know why they had to do anything anymore, but they did it. And then he's like, I can't stay here with you because I can't lose you again. And she's like, what? And then he takes the helmet off and original common Rider's like, I'm going to stay here with you. And he's like, if you do, you'll die. And then they both die. Like, whenever former agents or agents of Shocker die, which they all were, they, like, melt so that their secrets and shit can't be taken away or anything. And Butterfly Aug melts, because I guess they fatally wounded him somewhere, or maybe they paraphilized him. And he melted. And then Hongo, original Kamen Riderman. Hongo Kamen Riderman. He melts. <laughs> the, repl the replacement common rider's like, God damn it, I'm alone again. All right. After learning to like work with people and be a team. Because common rider Sisterman turns him good and stops his brainwashing. So he's like compelled to help and learns not to be a loner as much. It's weird. 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 And yeah. Then it's just a confusing fucking ending. I don't understand it. I don't understand why Hongo man had to die. Or even Butterfly Aug. It just gets very schlocky and kind of slow paced and <clears throat> doesn't even feel that cinematic after a while. Shin Ultraman stays pretty cinematic the whole way through. But like honestly, the GOAT is always gonna be Shin Godzilla. It's definitely at the top. I mean it's probably like the best Godzilla movie. I keep cracking. Besides the original. It's like up there with the original, really. But then I'd put Shin Ultraman as the best Godzilla. Shin Ultraman is like second, and then Shin Kamen Rider is third because there's three of them. <laughs> I would like to see Ano direct Shin Ultraman completely and Shin Kamen Rider completely. That that would be very interesting. And for everybody that keeps asking about Shin Godzilla 2, I saw him at G Fest at a panel, the same one that was showing Shin Godzilla. And he fucking said there wasn't gonna be one. He didn't even have plans for one. Toho didn't really even have plans for one. At one point, he's like, who would he even fight? If he fought Ghidorah, his back lasers would slice him up like salami. Like, that was a qu exact quote from him. He said Shin Godzilla would slice Ghidorah up like salami with his back lasers. And he's pr probably kind of right. I mean, there's a possibility of exploring what those fucking creepy skull things did. Are what it evolves into. But that's about it. There ain't much else. You'd probably obliterate a lot of monsters. Yep. So that, those are some movies that happened. Thanks.
My shoulders are injured, so I, I can't stop the recording. I can't stop it! Oh, and I was already, like, done with everything, and then was editing my Kamen Rider Ryuki video, which I filmed a long fucking time ago. It reminded me the fucking Shin Kamen Rider is super goddamn violent and bloody, and in the first six minutes, it should be rated R, based on what happens, but it says it's, like, PG-12. I don't know how things work.